why demons don't leave okay the first reason why they don't leave is because you're not maybe dealing with the demon at all now this may be a shock for some people but there are cases and we've encountered that where you are attacking but you're actually not dealing with the demon you're dealing with a mental illness or you're dealing with a wound or a fragment of their personality or somebody else's personality but you're not dealing with the demon at all and when the only tools in your toolbox is casting out demons you will treat everything as a demon and it's not correct just because it looks like that or it shakes like that it's important to not to jump to conclusions that it's a demon on the opposite it's better to be skeptical than to be a hundred percent convinced that a person coughed or they shook that it's a demon now I understand some of you like whoa everything is a demon not really I remember one lady was shaking and people came out 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 and they brought me in Vlad come over here come over here help help her out help her out begin to uh, deliver her and I said I asked the husband I said what is happening to her that's all I asked and the husband said oh she has a tumor um, and in her brain and she has seizures anytime she gets exposed to particular lights and I said like like lights we have on the stage he's like mm-hmm and so I asked the team I said pull back now is it true that sometimes you can have both mental illness and a demon 100% but it's important that you don't rush right away and you take a little bit of time and find out what's happening do you remember when they brought a boy to Jesus who had a mental illness Jesus didn't rush to doing deliverance he asked the father how long this has this been happening to him what, what's 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 happening to him what has happened to him what's the situation what's the story here that's why it's important that we we talk to people and sometimes instead of jumping in right away that we actually ask him hey have you been to the doctor um, have you been diagnosed with anything have you been put on medication mm -hmm, okay when was the last time you took that medication I remember praying for one case actually I was a part of a conference where people were praying for this girl who honestly haven't taken medication for three days because somebody had the audacity to tell her to not take that medication and she was having a lot of mental illnesses and no question that she had a demon she probably did but in this case what they were dealing they were not dealing with the demon it didn't respond to the name of Jesus whatsoever it didn't respond whatsoever to the authority of the name of Jesus it cussed it hit people and everything and a lot of times and it didn't look it wouldn't look in the deliverance minister's eyes and so these four that I would call them three four things when it won't look at my eyes when I commend it it disrespects the name of Jesus because demons they tremble and they obey and it will physically get violent demons are violent but the moment it starts hitting you demons can do that but it's typically not the demons it's the mental illness in the person or the person's will interfering as well and wants to hit your split personality part and so and those are kind of the signs that you would look for and there's many more that it's probably not a demon and so you would want to stop and actually talk to the person and see what's going on and sometimes you need to actually help them to get in the healthy state so that you can deal with the demon not with the wound disorder or a personality split okay and this is more common than you realize otherwise you will spend eight hours straight or sometimes when we had that we, we prayed one time for one person you know we bound uh, a person physically it was we were praying for this cousin of mine actually and uh, uh, during the night you know he came and he did so much drugs so he was so high and he took these particular drugs that um, that made him uh, just hallucinate and act really weird and honestly you know when the only thing you do is deliverance you start deliverance so we 
had to physically bind him. The reason why is because he would punch the walls, he would punch his mom and all of that stuff and he would curse and lie and just like just really really nasty. And so uh, we did that for about I think almost all night and then in the morning we got tired so we called the police. Um, but honestly they br uh, brought him to a institution or whatever the thing that they put him into, put him some um, put him into a detox, he came out and then he eventually ex received his deliverance. But he needed to go through a detox because he was actually high on drugs. And so did he have demons? 100%. But we were not effective in doing the deliverance and it wasn't because we were encountering a stubborn demon, it's because we were encountering a drug addict, somebody on drugs. Okay and so that's why it's important that just because somebody manifests and you're not seeing the breakthrough, like ask the questions, is this person on drugs right now? Now can God supernaturally zap them out? 100%. Um, does this person have mental illness? Um, when was the last time they took their medication? Does this person have a split personality as well? And so, um, and so there, there's a lot of other things. So I would really be weary of just um, this is not us saying, oh, this is not our fault um, that we can't drive this out. Let's blame it on somebody else. This is us doing our due diligence with difficult cases. The second thing of maybe that demons are not leaving, they're stubborn. The second reason is that demons are actually too strong. Now, something that I want you to consider is the Bible says that when a demon leaves a person, not is cast out but leaves a person. He goes and finds seven more wicked, demons more wicked and that speaks in Matthew chapter 12 verse 45. Seven more or seven other more wicked. That tells us that some demons are more wicked. Some are more powerful. Some have higher ranking, have more power in them than others. Not all demons have the same power. The fact that seven more, seven other more wicked tells us that some are less powerful. Now, is the name of Jesus more powerful than any demon? A hundred percent. We're not dealing here today with can His name. We're just dealing with the reality that you stepped into a battle where you are dealing probably with something that is just more heavy than what you've experienced before. And that could just take a little bit longer or that could just take a little bit more of homework or a little bit more of working with this person. But the reality is some stubborn cases you're really dealing with more demons and more wicked demons. In the case of Jesus and the demon-possessed man, I mean they had a legion, okay? Even if they had the weak demons, you know, put 6,000 weak demons and you have a pretty much a problem on your hand. You know, a problem that is not a, no problem for Jesus but it's still a problem that for you and for me and it could take just longer and more work with this person. But sometimes you can have not just more demons within the person but actually more wicked demons that it could take a little bit longer for you to work with this person to experience freedom. And maybe you are on the receiving end and you just have more and more wicked demons that it will just take um, not longer for Jesus to drive them out but it would be longer for you to receive your complete freedom. So that's the second reason why demons wouldn't leave is because number one is that actually maybe you're not dealing with a demon. Number two is that you're dealing with something that is more demons and more wicked. The third reason is lack of faith. On your end, lack of faith. So Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 when disciples had a failed deliverance he said that because of your unbelief that you couldn't drive this demon out. So sometimes what happens is that you have no faith in Jesus' ability to use you to deliver somebody. And so I really would encourage you to not doubt God's authority in you when you're doing deliverance. Because one of the things that stubborn demons will test is actually your faith. And if you yield to unbelief and you begin to entertain these thoughts 
and though I don't believe that demons can really read your thoughts without you giving them permission of course but um, but they can project and they can see your face, facial expressions and the tone of your voice and the, the firmness and the confidence in your um, in your in your voice the moment you yield into that that this is not going to happen deliverance will not happen man I should have prayed more and all of this stuff then what you're doing is that you're pretty much yielding to lack of faith and lack of faith can be the cause why you can't cast them out and so don't doubt God's authority inside of you don't doubt that the power of Jesus is very powerful inside of you okay the enemy will want to make you doubt that. We just had a, uh, a Sunday um, service, I think it was last weekend, yeah, and a person that came for deliverance and as I was uh, praying for deliverance, you know, nothing was happening and then I didn't leave this person. Um, as I start praying more, um, Holy Spirit just kind of prompted me to linger a little bit more with this person and, you know, person start coughing and all of this stuff and then, um, and then the demon just threw this mocking laughter at me you know like and then oh you're nobody and, and all of this stuff and so and with me I've, I've done this you know not once or twice and I've heard all kinds of bad stuff about me from demons so like that doesn't um, um, doesn't affect me anymore and I actually started to laugh I don't encourage you to do that uh, because deliverance is a serious matter and and I, I am very serious during deliverance I don't laugh um, I don't do this stuff but this time I just had this laugh inside of my spirit and it did come out okay so I wasn't like hysterically laughing but deep inside I'm like you gotta be kidding me you demon you have no idea this has nothing to do with me my name I don't have faith in Vlad I have faith in the Holy Spirit I have faith in the name of Jesus and so I, I did let my laughter come out just a little bit and within I don't know a minute or something the demon was on the floor and the person I believe the person was delivered and so um, don't doubt Jesus's authority in you. If you do, uh, some demons won't leave. They'll right away spot it. They'll spot it in you. They'll see it right through you that you're not sure, that you're not confident, that you are doubting, that you are not convinced, that you're not sure and, and they just won't come out. And so be sure be confident, stand your ground and the devil will make fun of you and say you're not powerful enough, I will never leave. Uh, that's just theatrics. He just does that to throw you off balance. Stand your ground. As sure as the rising of the sun, you are supposed to be in this place and this person is going to be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the fourth thing that happens of why demons don't leave is because you're personal walk with the Lord is weak. Uh, Matthew 17 verse 21, after Jesus rebukes disciples for not having enough faith, He says, but this kind leaves by prayer and fasting. Now some people say that this kind mainly relates to prayer, to unbelief, that unbelief is removed through prayer and fasting, but I don't really believe in that. The reason being is that unbelief is really dealt not with prayer and fasting but it's dealt with trusting in God's Word and standing on God's Word. I do believe that the difference between Jesus and disciples that failed in deliverance is Jesus spent uh, pretty much 24 hours in on the mountain uh, fasting um, most likely because I don't think he was eating there and then he spent time with God in prayer and disciples were just on the bottom of the mountain you know dealing with deliverance and they were not very effective and so this is not to take it personally into ourselves and feeling guilty but if you keep seeing that you have a lot of failed deliverances uh, maybe it's time to kind of relook at your life are you walking with the Lord is there purity in your life is there prayer are you living a life of fasting are you living a life of commitment to God. Sometimes demons are too strong and other times we are just too weak. We have lack of faith in, in Christ in us um, and sometimes when you have a relationship with God that's not good, it cripples your faith, you know, because you, you lack confidence because you know that you're not pleasing to the Lord. You're, you don't live your life in a way that honors Him and so unfortunately you can't walk in great faith, I believe, as a Christian if you know that you're living in compromise. 
And so now you can try to, you know, kind of uh, fill yourself with this self-confession, you know, I have great faith, you know, Christ is in me and all of this stuff. And, and though there are verses of people practicing lawlessness and casting out demons, but generally it doesn't work um, consistently. Okay, you can't do this for a long time. You might do it once or twice, but you can't do this for a long time. It will backfire if you live a conscious, habitual life of prayerlessness and no fasting, which gives me an opportunity. I'll take a little pause. And for those of you that are just logging in or tuning in, I want to remind you that we are having a challenge 21 day challenge in January and as you're seeing that on the screen right now um, we are doing a 21 day of prayer and fasting. So for those of you who feel like your spiritual batteries are not where they're supposed to be, um, this will be a good moment to start preparing for that prayerfully. Um, I know not everybody can fast this long, not everybody can fast at all, but majority of you can fast something and for some time and begin to prayerfully consider that, uh, to do that. Uh, let me walk with you during that season of building yourself in prayer and fasting. All you have to do is just go to pastorvlad.org forward slash fast forward, sign up for challenge and it's completely free. It costs you nothing to do uh, that, to be a part of this uh, group that will do this fast. Now, the last reason why demons won't leave is the person receiving deliverance has not met conditions required for their deliverance. Sometimes it's as simple as they have not confessed a sin, they haven't renounced something, the soul tie wasn't broken, generational curses were not broken, demonic objects were not removed in their house. Sometimes you're doing a deliverance and they actually have a demonic object in their pocket sometimes you're doing a deliverance but this person at that present time actually habitually and consciously lives in sin and they need to be repenting they need to renounce and they need to forgive sometimes if i am dealing with a case where um, it's difficult it seems like i can't get a breakthrough i stop the deliverance and i ask the person hey is there anything that you need to repent as we're doing deliverance is the lord bringing anything to your mind. Have you, do you have any unforgiveness toward anybody? Um, are you currently living in things that are not pleasing to God? And if, you know, they say those things, then I lead them through the prayer um, and then I go back and attack the demon. So if the person hasn't met the conditions for deliverance and you're just going out, 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 you know, um, sometimes you, you just save your voice and just pull back and just talk to the person and see what's happening there and then see if there's something else that needs to be dealt with, something else uprooted, renounced and broken before you continue deliverance.